ball hogs. What do you do with them? If there is players on your team that keep dribbling the ball and they keep uh, losing it and they, you know, what do you do? You're supposed to be about development, right? What happens when the development is only about one player and they keep running the game for everyone else to get developed and you have parents scream on the sideline? A bunch of problems. Anyways, I have a question from a listener and it says, I would love to hear your thoughts on style of play and ball hogs in youth soccer. The podcast experts all scream to embrace the ball hog and seem to delight emphasizing the 1v1. That would seem fine for the little ones. When you get to U13 and 11 aside pitches, it makes for some extremely ugly soccer. On the size of the pitch, some players that is, or one player that is only interested in 1v1 and their own goal and is uninterested in the team really takes away from the game for all the other players. I would think that at some point, the art of the pass needs to be learned just as much as the art of dribbling. Finally, there is more opportunity for an entire team to have quality touches when everyone is playing as a team. So um, he has two questions, which I'll read in a second. But the, the, the one thing that needs to be understood, especially how I do things when I'm coaching youth, it's always about the individual. You have to put every individual in a situation of they need to play to their strengths and they need to develop their weaknesses by being allowed to think. And everyone's on their own level. So, so I'm going to give you an example. I was in Tucson last night and I was consulting a team. And when I consult teams, I, I watch them play and I give the coach advice and occasionally I'll address the team uh, and, uh, give information or go to the practices and do the same. But the game is more important because I could literally look over every pass where, where, where the passes are being made, how many touches each player is making and et cetera. There was one player on this team that the 10, uh, he was playing 10 at the time. And this kid is, they're 13 years old, by the way, this kid is ridiculous. Like his technique was just, out of this world. He, he is like a little messy. Uh, he would hardly lose a ball. He knew how to spin, turn, get away, and combine passes. He would do, he does that very well. But as far as him taking on players, he would only um, escape p- pressure, which is a good thing, but he would never take risk in the final third. And this kid could out dribble everybody. He just needs a little confidence. So I was talking to the coach. I'm like, listen, get your number 10 and make a rule for him. Because every time they got an attacking third, he would look to pass wide or, you know, pass it backwards, just keep possession. And he needs to be pushed to the next level. And his, you can see it. Everyone can see it. This kid is so technically sound and can just, he could beat players 1v1, no problem. But he wasn't really taking that risk. He would just kind of react to the situation. So I told the coach, I'm like, we, we got to offset this kid. And when I say offset, is when you want to get a, uh, a player to do something that's not in their characteristic, but you want to fix that, you have to offset it by creating rules, which I'm against rules, but you have to create extremes so they can balance themselves out. So the rule was every time this player got in the final third, he's taken on the whole back line. And when I say the whole back line, he's dealing with 1v1. Because it's a flat line, they're they're not. There's really no first and second defender. The second defender is usually from behind, um, pushing you towards the uh, attacking goal. And you beat one, you beat the whole back line. So we made that the rule. And he got in, drew a penalty kick, and uh, did well there. And he, and, and he he took some other rests, and they weren't successful. But it was he was learning, and once he gets once it, you know, clicks in his brain, then he'll he'll be able to understand. And then you give him more freedom. Hey, you have the opportunity to pass. You also have the opportunity to take on the whole back line because you only have to beat one. You beat them all because they're flat. Anyways, so I would say you focus on the individual. You totally focus on the individual. But to the questions, so th- there's two questions. The first question is, at what age is constant dribbling and turnovers not to be encouraged anymore. So that's, um, I don't want 
even when I was coaching U6, I coached U4. U4 is completely different. That's just everyone has a ball pretty much, and the goal is to know which direction you're going. But when U6 and you're trying to figure things out, it's all about, you know, trying to get them spacing so they all can do their thing. And it depends because if you get, if you're with a, a technical group, you can find five year olds, Hispanic five year olds that can play. I see them in the tournaments and stuff. And they don't play three on three. They play like eight on eight in these huge uniforms. It, it depends on their technical ability, not not the um, age. It's like bl- karate. You know, are they black belt, brown belt? That's how you pair. You don't do it by the age. So let's just, let's just, Let's just assume uh, it's a, a competitive team. It's it's more of competing and traveling a little bit. So say you wait and they, they play and travel. I I would still have the same focus for a U8 team as I would on a U12 for the individual. I don't want turnovers. I don't want turnovers. I never have I, I don't like players dribbling just to dribble. I I always had simple rules uh, for every age. It, it's for them to have success. And it would be when you when you uh, can make a pass, make it early, and then um, don't uh, don't just kick it in hopes it would go somewhere. Lose it dribbling, trying to find a pass. I I don't think. Little ones should be like going one v one at players at all times. I think they kind of they do that on accident because they they can't process everything. They don't know they can't look up, so they're always in a situation of one v ones. But when you actually have a team that can actually spread it, you know, U eight, U ten, U twelve, you got the spacing down. They they know their position. Uh, you want everyone to get a touch on the ball. You do but under rules where they have the choice. So I, I've covered this topic many times. I, I hate saying age. I love talking about uh, individuals. That's why I do stats. Some players can play one-touch soccer. Some players can play two-touch soccer. Some need three, four, five touches in order to recognize the passes. It's not about putting your head down and dribbling. Okay, But... If you have a player that is special, like I, I had um, a U8, or no, U6, um, no, U, F- U4, my daughter's first team. I created a U4 league, uh, and there was a girl on this team, and her name was Naomi Aguilar, and at three years old, she could dribble everybody and score goals. She just could do it. There's always those players. So we built a team um, around her uh, and my daughter, and uh, – we took that team and, and they stayed together for shoot six, seven years before I handed them off and then it was destroyed. But um, at U8, she, she could dribble the whole field and score goals. And we let her. She didn't lose the ball. She won games. Now, did I change, you know, when we're up by three, did I have her play different positions and look to combine? Uh, yes. I always gave her that, but I would allow her to be her, and uh, she was just special. So you don't want to deny them of that. You do want to introduce the opposite of what they're good at, if that makes sense. So if they can dribble and it's just too easy, now let's see if they can do the next step of the game, which is passing and receiving. Is she able to receive the pass and and get it back again and combine to someone else? Uh, I would challenge uh, players like that that was already in their body, and she could do it. Of course, she ended up playing Division One soccer at ASU. She was born to be a, a soccer player. It, it just you you every situation's different. You're not going to always have a little messy on your team, but if you do, you have to challenge them. You can't just let them dribble to dribble to uh, find their opportunities of winning for the parent or the coach. You need to challenge them. Let them score goals. At the same time, see if they can learn how to combine and 